Hi, it's time for another numbers preview hand prediction or something like that. This week, it's the Alabama Crimson Tide taking on the University of Kentucky Wildcats. And first, let's have a look at their schedules. You'll see that uh, Alabama and Kentucky have played two common teams. One of them is Mississippi State. Both of them brought home a win on that. The other is Tennessee. Alabama defeated Tennessee by 14 points. Kentucky lost to them by six. Kentucky was recently on a losing streak. They went through the meat of their SEC schedule. They won one, lost three. They beat Florida. They lost to Georgia, Mizzou, and Tennessee. Now let's look at the basic overview of both teams. Alabama's record is eight and one. We've already seen Kentucky at six and three. The college football playoff ranking, Alabama has a ranking of number eight in the nation right now. Uh, Kentucky's not ranked. The power index ranking is at number five for Alabama. Power index ranking puts Kentucky at number 38. The away record for Alabama, this is an away game for them that will be played up in Lexington, is 3-0. and The home record for University of Kentucky is 4-2. and Alabama has one significant away win. That's against Texas A&M. It's a rowdy stadium there at Kyle Field. A crowd gets really involved. The significant home win for Kentucky is Florida. Total offense ranking for Alabama is 71 versus total offense ranking for University of Kentucky at 91. Defense 25 in the nation for Alabama, 42 in the nation for Kentucky. Points per game, 32 for Alabama, very closely followed by 30 for the Wildcats. And points given up by the defense, 18 per game for Alabama, 22 for the University of Kentucky. Both have an excellent turnover margin, meaning it's positive. Uh, plus three for Alabama, plus two for Kentucky. And here's where there's a little change in what Alabama is used to. Um, they're playing against a team that averages more penalties per game than they do. Kentucky breaks the law seven times a, a game. Alabama on average six. Kentucky is number 61 in the nation in penalties. And Alabama has actually clawed their way from almost number 130 up to a number 49 in the nation. And the time of possession, 30 minutes per game for the University of Alabama, just over 30 minutes and just over 28 minutes for the University of Kentucky. That's going to be a significant number, I think, in this matchup. I'm doing things a little bit differently this time. Whereas before I put all offense numbers for both teams together, all defense numbers, in this presentation it'll be offense versus defense and defense versus offense, just like it is on the field. So first let's look at the Alabama offense versus the Kentucky defense. In terms of third down efficiency, Alabama's in the top 20 in the nation at 48%. Defending the third down, Kentucky's ranked number 97 in the nation, allowing 43% first downs each time their opponent makes an attempt. Fourth down efficiency, Alabama's one for two. They don't go for fourth downs too often. Saban generally plays it safe. Stopping fourth downs, uh, University of Kentucky is at 50%. 12 have been attempted against them. Six have been successful. If we turn to passing, Alabama's ranked number 77 in the nation in passing. The pass defense for Kentucky is ranked number 81. Alabama thrown the ball an average of 23 times a game. 81, I'm sorry, 34 times for the opponents of the University of Kentucky. Bama averages 219 in terms of yardage per game. Kentucky gives up 236. And if you look at yards per attempt and yards per completion, Alabama's at 9.6 for attempts and 15 and roughly 15 and a half for completions. University of Kentucky's a little stingier than uh, Alabama's average, giving up seven yards per attempt at only 10 and a half yards per completion. Alabama's thrown five picks, and Kentucky defense has stolen the ball out of the air eight times. Alabama's given up 37 sacks. They've offered up their quarterback 37 times. That's a significant number. It's one of the worst in the nation, but they seem to be trending positive on that one. University of Kentucky has sacked the opposing quarterback 23 times. They're tied for 31st in the nation. 
Overall passing efficiency for the University of Alabama is 62%. Strangely enough, University of Kentucky gives up a better uh, passing efficiency to their opponents than that 62%. The opponents of Kentucky thus far have completed the ball 66% of the time. Let's flip it around and look at the Kentucky offense versus the Alabama defense on efficiencies and passing. Kentucky has got a third down efficiency at 39%. The opponents for Alabama only convert it to a first down 35% of the time. In terms of fourth down efficiency, the University of Kentucky has attempted a fourth down seven times, and they've only made one of them. University of Alabama defense has faced 22 attempts. Let's turn to rushing. Start first with the Alabama offense versus the Kentucky defense. Alabama's ranked, number 58. <laughs> Alabama's ranked number 58 in the nation in rushing. Rush defense is a strong point for the University of Kentucky at uh, 21 ranking in the nation. Alabama attempts 40 rushes per game. The opponents of Kentucky, they're used to seeing 33 attempts. Bama gains 163 yards per game. 111 yards is what the University of Kentucky gives up. So something's got to give there. 4.06 yards per attempt for Alabama rushers. Once again, Kentucky comes in well under that number at 3.37 yards per attempt, giving up to their opponents. Alabama's lost only three fumbles, and Kentucky's recovered four. The fumble rate for Alabama is one per every 120 plays. For Kentucky, it's one per 74 rushing plays that they can expect to recover a fumble. Now let's switch the Kentucky offense. Rushing. They are ranked 85th in the nation in rushing. Alabama's rushing defense is ranked number 30. Kentucky only attempts 27 rushes per game, and Alabama is used to facing 34 rushes per game from their opponents. Yards per game is a low 141 in rushing for Kentucky. Alabama only gives up 120. Kentucky does quite well when they run the ball, averaging almost 5.3 yards per carry. Alabama gives up 3.52, three and a half yards when the opponents rush. Kentucky's only lost three fumbles and Alabama's recovered three. Kentucky's fumble rate though is one per 80 times rushing. Alabama takes one per 102 from their opponents. If you take a look at special teams, pretty much negligible when it comes to kickoff returns and punt returns for both teams. Neither one of them do that very much, and none have particularly shown in that area. Field goal percentage, both teams have outstanding field goal kickers. Uh, Kentucky is 9 for 10 at 90%, and Alabama 15 for 17 attempts at almost 90%. Average punt yards for Alabama is 42 net per punt, and for the University of Kentucky, 36 yards net average per punt. So let's take a few of the key matchups. Alabama's number 49 in the nation in time of possession. University of Kentucky is number 108. Alabama's going to have the ball more than Kentucky in this game. I think it's a definite advantage to the University of Alabama. Third down offense for Alabama, number 18 in the nation versus the number 97 third down defense. Advantage, Bama. And the number 76 total offense versus the number 83 total defense. Again, advantage Bama. Home team versus away team. I saw Stoops stoking up the Kentucky fans for this game. He's a great guy, a great coach, and perhaps they'll listen to him on it. Uh, I will give an advantage to you, the Wildcats on the home team versus away team. And the quarterback rating for Jalen Milrow is up at number 13 in the nation. Probably not a lot of Bama fans know that, but he steadily climbed over each and every one of the games that he's, he started recently. Um, Leary for Kentucky is unranked. So in terms of quarterback play, I give the, the nod to Alabama. So both teams have key to victories. For Bama, you got to come out swinging. You haven't been doing that in most of your games. You give up a touchdown early. You get behind on the scoreboard. Sometimes you get more than one touchdown behind against good teams. You got to understand you're in a game from the first whistle, come out swinging. Boyle's Law, for those of you 
who are in engineering and college, that's increase in or physics, increase in temperature, increase in pressure, turn up the heat early on the quarterback, bring that pressure at the outset of the game, and then maybe later when they have to pass, you can drop back and cover, maybe pick off a pick off a uh, errant pass. Be the time traveler's team. Control the clock. Starve Kentucky. Make them miss the holding the ball. Give them separation anxiety for the ball. And then free the horses. I think Alabama should be able to rush on Kentucky. Give it a whirl and don't give up early. For Kentucky, they do have keys to victory. They've got to win the first engagement. As I just said, Alabama gives up points at the outset of the game or they give, they give up field position. If Kentucky wins the first engagement, it puts them one leg up towards victory. Just like I told LSU, you got a CIA, Milrow. You got to put a spy on them. And a nice little rhyme, I'm kind of a poet and don't know it, but if there's not a spy, you can wave goodbye. And LSU paid the price. Milrow scored several touchdowns in that game, some of them from fairly 20 yards out plus. Commit to extra pass defense. So you got a spy out there. He's watching Milrow. He can also cover backs coming out of the uh, backfield. But you got to commit to a pass defense because I think Alabama should be running. I think they're going to try to pass at the outset. Crowdfunding. The fans must get involved. They've got to be a part of the win if Kentucky is to win. And then you've got to control the ball. Greed is an asset here. It's not a sin. Hang on to the ball. Move it forward. You average over five yards per carry on the rush. You don't give up on the rush either. And you've got to Tennessee the tide. Do the things you did to keep close to Tennessee. You could have won that game. Unfortunately for you, you didn't. But if you Tennessee the tide, then you have a good chance of moving toward the W. What does the line say? Well, Alabama's up by 10 and a half points, according to Vegas. You can see the totals and the over under there. Uh, ESPN's matchup prediction says Alabama roughly 86% chance of winning, which means there's at least 14% of the 20,000 simulations run by the ESPN computer that show victory for the Kentucky Wildcats. Let's take a look at the weather and see if it's going to be a factor in the game. A cool 57 degrees, those of you coming from Alabama, maybe from South Alabama where I live, better bundle up just a little bit um, on that one because the wind would be blowing about eight miles per hour with gusts up to 12. I don't anticipate any impact on the significant impact on the kicking game. The dew point has a good spread from the anticipated temperature, 57 degrees versus 31 degree dew point. It's going to be clear. It's going to be clear and visibility a million miles. Should be just a beautiful game, beautiful weather. What do I think is going to happen? What do I think is going to happen? I'm putting Alabama at 37 points, Kentucky at 17. The numbers indicate that kind of game. Alabama blew away the line against LSU and against Tennessee. They're going to blow away the line against Kentucky. People in Vegas either don't like them or don't have uh, faith in their turnaround, midseason turnaround. It's what the numbers definitely say now. Having said that, does Kentucky have a chance to win? Yes. The ESPN computer had thousands of simulations showing a Kentucky victory. Other teams have overcome the numbers, but the team has to commit to it and do it. So that's my prediction. Here's praying that all the fans will get to and from the game safely, that it will be played as penalty-free as possible for both teams, that all the players will return healthy, and that you have a good time. If you like this presentation, it takes a long time of research to put these together. I would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. Helps me, helps my family. Thanks.